So you're looking at Pete Cabrera Jr. He recently came across my radar when one of my friends had posted a video on social media. I decided to take a look at him and his so-called ministry, do some investigation. And if you stick with me till the end of my video here, I'm going to show you that he's nothing more, I'd call him a street performer, a street magician. His priority is to do tricks. Now, most of these tricks certainly involve the Kundalini spirit, as well as familiar spirits, the power of suggestion, and of course, willing participants um, who want to please their master. The gospel is secondary when it comes to this guy and his ministry, his so-called ministry. He travels the world and he does his tricks out on the streets. Um, but as I'll show you, it's nothing different than you've already seen. And certainly, it's not anything that I could say is a miracle. Uh, so let's get started as we uh, examine who Pete Cabrera Jr. is. So the first clip I'm going to show you here uh, really speaks for itself. It's absolute silliness, one of the oldest tricks in the book. Let's take a look. Jiffy! Wow! They're even again! Right? Gosh. You ready? Mm -hmm. Watch. Right leg? Come out. More. Come out. Come out. Come out. In Jesus' name. Come out. Come out. What are you waiting on? More. 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 So, good grief. This goes on and on and on. More, more, more. That's what he says. The really silly part ensues about right here. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So what he's done is he's told this gentleman, he's, he's apparently extended his leg an inch and a half, two inches, and now he told this guy to stand up uh, and we'll watch the theatrics happen here. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that is, wow. <laughs> Am I standing? Stand straight, like, I think stand, I'm straight standing. stand straight, stand straight, stand straight. Stand straight, put your feet together. <laughs> stand with your feet oh, together. Oh, look, he, he, he almost fell over uh, because Pete left his leg long. Stand with your feet together. Now stand straight. <laughs> look at him. It's hard not to fall over. Why? Wow. Now... Am I playing with you? No. Is this so the first thing I asked myself here was, where is salvation in all this? For no particular reason, he's just growing legs out here, I guess, to, to prove himself. Now, a fraud like this has to do things like this so that he can get the donations. And we'll get to that in just a minute. But I want to show you what he does now as he's uh hold on a second let me get that clip all right so now you're going to really see the power of pete cabrera uh, jr in full swing here as he restores this man's legs let's watch and note how he does it am i touching you no watch this look at that <laughs> there you go he blows on <laughs> He blows on the legs and snaps his fingers. And oh my golly, look, uh, the man's legs are restored. Isn't that an absolute miracle? Now I want you to remember this part because we're gonna talk about growing out limbs a little bit later here as we go. Uh, but again, th there's people that actually believe this. Now in the book of 1 John chapter 4, verse one, look what it says. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. For those of you that tell me that I'm being judgy or mean, this is all I'm doing. And again, stick with me to the end. You're going to see. All right, so we've got another clip. Let's listen. I wrecked my dirt bike when I was a kid, and my head got all bashed up, and I ended up hitting a metal plate in my head and stuff. Okay, but now you also have an arm that shorter. See that? And what do you think is going to happen? It's going to grow out. It's going to grow out. <laughs> it's unimaginable that people actually believe this. You could literally see this guy bending his hand. And apparently he just got very excited because now Pete here is going to 
do the miracle on his arm. And, and I got to tell you, lucky for this guy, because Pete just made his legs grow out, and now he's going to do his arms. That's what you call a double whammy uh, bonus day for this young man, right? You're feeling it, huh? Come on. <laughs> Grow. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. You got to say something. Now, I want... Well, hold on. So, what's going on? It's crazy. All right. I wanted to get his arms in the picture here. So, if we are to believe what we just saw, by the power of God working through Pete Cabrera, uh, the Holy Spirit made bone, muscle, tissue, nerves, everything grow within this man, right? Uh, not only on this guy's arms, but his legs, as well as the last video that we saw. Is it safe to say, as we watch this absolute miracle happen, that Pete is telling you that he has, apparently through God, the ability to make limbs grow, right? The, the second question I have is, if that's true and the Holy Spirit is working through Pete Cabrera Jr., does that Holy Spirit have limitations? Yes or no? Answer me. Okay. Okay. I hope you answered yes, because we know that the true Holy Spirit, our God, has no limitations. So now my next question is this. Why can't you grow out these limbs, Pete? I'll wait for your answer. Yeah, there is no answer, is there? See, this is one of our American heroes who gave his legs for this country. Now, if you and all of you listening actually believe the silliness you just saw, where Pete is proclaiming to have the ability to grow out limbs at random, at will, for crying out loud, as you watched him command retraction and extension and retraction and extension. This should be no problem. But yet it is, isn't it? Because you don't see Pete <laughs> meeting any of these gentlemen, do you? This is where the folly ensues, and this is just one of the many reasons why it proves that Pete Cabrera is nothing than a, nothing more than a street magician. I'd call him the David Blaine of false and fake and fraudulent Christians. Hey, uh, this is Debbie. What do, you, what do you got in your hand, Debbie? A spoon. A spoon. Regular spoon, right? Is there anything different about it? No. Regular spoon, right? Regular spoon. Right, look. Dead. Now, <laughs> when he taps the spoon, all I can think of, this guy is such a street performer. He's tapping this. Look, it's an ordinary spoon. He's like, look what I have here, an ordinary deck of cards. See anything up my sleeves? No? Okay, I'm about to do my trick. Listen to this. I call this absolute blasphemy and mockery. I'm not alive, right? What are you going to do? Okay. I'm going to command this spoon in the name of Jesus right now to receive all the healing that Christ has in this spoon. Okay? Right now, in the name of Jesus, I command you in the name of Jesus to receive all the healing of Christ Jesus right now. In Jesus' name, I command you to receive all of it. In Jesus' name. I, I don't even have the words. It, what I'm watching is so disturbing in these end times. This is clearly end times delusion, trickery, uh, fables. To watch this moron think that he can even command this. I wanted you to see this. If this, if you're okay with this, then you are a novice who does not read the Bible and you'll fall for anything. But we're going to come back to this in a little bit. I just wanted to show you that. So now we're over at uh, Pete's website and of course, um, the Royal Family International School of Ministry University. Uh, Pete's doing pretty good. He's opened up a school of ministry where he teaches you uh, the same power that he has. This is absolutely what it is. If you want to come over and check out uh, what this is all about, let's go to the About tab here. And uh, we found something. I shouldn't say we. I found something very interesting here. I started to read the scripture that he had posted. For the kingdom, of, uh, for the kingdom realm of God comes with power not simply with impressive words. And I said, 
impressive words. What, what is this? The Passion Translation, 1 Corinthians 4.20. Somebody, anybody know what the Passion Translation is? It's the first time I've ever heard of this. Um, scroll further down, he's got another verse quoted here. And again, look, here's the Passion Translation. Well, obviously, Galatians, that's the Bible. Apparently, this is a new translation. I've never heard of it before. So then I was forced to go search out and do research on what the Passion Translation is. Now, within the realm of end times folly, the end times circus, this is your jester. This is your clown right here. This, of course, is Sid Roth, who will do anything for a buck. If you've got a supernatural story, no need to verify it. He'll have you on the show. You'll put a package together and everyone's going to get paid. That's what Sid Roth's all about. And this is no different. This, we're going to be talking about Brian Simmons. And of course, yes, Brian Simmons is the author of the Passion Translation Bible. Now, why is that important? Well, we're going to find out because in, in the method that this, oh gosh, this, I'm trying to be nice. This Mr. Simmons came about, uh, you're about to hear the story as to how he came about, uh, with the new translation, the Passion, Passion Translation. Here's Brian Simmons. Now he's going to tell Sid Roth how he came about um, doing the <laughs> doing the Passion Translation. And I've got to warn you, um, get ready, because uh, for those of you that have eyes to see and ears to hear, uh, this is really something. Okay, 2009, Brian Simmons gets a new assignment. What happened? Jesus Christ came into my room. He breathed on me, and he commissioned me. When he breathed on you, I have to ask you this. What did it feel like? Oh, there you go. It felt like a kiss from heaven. Good answer, right? So this guy is testifying that Jesus came into his room. Um, and I'll let the rest play. I'm sorry. It felt like heaven's wind, the rock the breath, the wind of God it came upon me. And it, Now we're going to see a recreation here. Um, I love it as this guy uh, within the recreation uh, sits there in front of Jesus, where most of those of us who revere Christ would be on flat on our faces. This guy doesn't move. He spoke to me and said, mm -hmm. I'm commissioning you to translate, to translate the Bible. The Bible into the into translation, the, the project, translation project, project that I'm do. giving you to do. And, and he promised that he would help me, and he promised me he would give me secrets of the Hebrew language. Now, I don't know about you. I've had my fair share of run-ins with all kinds of crackpots who said that Jesus came into their room, or Jesus showed up. And isn't that a surprise that Jesus has new secrets, new knowledge, new information that they're going to impart unto the buffoon who's telling the story. The sad thing is, is that all the people in the audience, all the people, or most of the people watching this, actually believe this to be true. But we're going to take a look at something. Now, if you come over to the book of Matthew, chapter 24, the disciples approached Jesus and asked him, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming in the end of the world? Of course, Jesus said, Take heed that no man deceive you, of course, nobody's paying attention to that. He went on in the very next verse and said, For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. So within the first two verses of Jesus speaking here, he gave two warnings to be not deceived. But it doesn't stop there. Because if you scroll down, look what it says. And if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders in so much that it were possible they should deceive the very elect. Look what he says. Behold, I have told you before. So there's so many wonderful things in, in the way that he's phrasing this. Uh, but he continues, Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he's in the desert, go not forth. Or behold, he's in secret chambers, believe it not. But yet, countless stories, again, Brian Simmons is no different. He's telling a tale that, hey, guess what? Oh, something great happened. Jesus showed up in my bedroom. And by the way, I've got a new translation. And uh, Pete Cabrera apparently was one of those that believed it because 
Now he's quoting from that translation on his website. Now, if you're a follower of the Bible and of Jesus Christ, we don't need to tell you that God's word does not change. There's nothing in Scripture that says Jesus will show up uh, at the end of days to give us an updated version on an easier translation with new secret knowledge. This is absolutely ridiculous, and it goes against everything that Jesus did teach. Uh, so you know what kind of a crackpot uh, Pete Cabrera is following here in the person of Brian Simmons. Uh, but also just for humor, I want to play you another clip uh, because this guy goes on uh, because his story is not done. And I thought this was kind of funny. There's only one entrance into the realm of the spirit, and that is the name of Yeshua, the name of Jesus Christ. It's We don't work it up. We don't get into an ecstatic state on our own. By the way, here's Sid's offer of the day, the Passion Translation Bible box set, 15 books of the Bible in eight volumes. I'm sure there's a pretty good price tag there, but you think they sold any that day? Of course they did. I was actually asleep, and I was taken out of my body, and I was brought into this immense library room. I loved being there, and the Lord came up to me, and he said, Brian, I have brought you here. Okay, before the Lord gives us his next words of wisdom here, which by the way, this is not the Lord. I just, is it just me? Is, does this actor Jesus just look like he's absolutely baked out of his mind? He's just stoned. You think they called him on the set and said, all right, dude, you know, sober up here. He could not get it together because he looks hammered. Here, brought you here to let you take any two, two books, books you, want. you want. And I'm just walking around, but it didn't take long before I saw a book that I knew I was to have. And then soon I saw another book I knew I was to have. But uh, you'll never want me back on the show when I tell you what happened then. What? Well, I have to tell you the truth. I saw a third book, and I knew the Lord told me I could only take two. And in heaven, whatever you think is put out over the loudspeaker. Everyone hears it. <laughs> now, did you all know that, that there's loudspeakers in heaven? I didn't know that, so that's good information. <laughs> Your thoughts are broadcasted. So here's what I hear coming out of the loudspeaker, and it's my own thoughts. How can I steal this book? <laughs> and then I said, oh, no, I'm shoplifting on God. <laughs> I, I felt so ashamed that I, I... So there's a couple of things here when you're talking about the silliness of what you're listening to. The absolute folly and, quite frankly, the blasphemy. This guy testified that not only did Jesus come to his room while he sat there and didn't kneel before him, but then later on he was also taken into heaven, where we know in the book of John, Jesus says, no man hath ascended into heaven. But also, in this realm of heaven, which by the way, there is no sin there, it's perfection, he's testifying that he committed sin in heaven, in the presence of God, the holy angels, and everything that is holy and they all sit and laugh at it. Now, do you know why they all laugh at it? Well, he, he's laughing because he's getting paid. But everybody else laughs because they're novices. They don't know their scripture. And therefore, they're deceived. And people like Sid Roth and Pete Cabrera Jr. count on this. And this is why folly ensues, because nobody is seeking God themselves through Holy Scripture. But here you go. This is Brian Simmons. And he's the author of the Passion Translation Bible. Now, as we come back over to Pete's website, we're going to learn some other things. Uh, if you want to register to get into one of his classes, he's going to teach you how to do what he does. Let's read this. Experience of, uh, an intensive five days focused on learning how to walk in the fullness of who you are in Christ. Pete has had the privilege of personally training a large number of students from countries all over the world. Through this course, we are, I'm sorry, we start with three full days of classroom style teachings where you'll be challenged in your understanding of the scriptures. After this, uh, we'll put your learning to the test with one day of hands-on street magic. Oh no, I'm sorry, street healing. So you can learn how to do what Pete does. Now, that would all be all right if there was actually teaching involved there. Uh, teaching, to me also, especially when it comes to the gospel, as Jesus said, 
freely you have received now freely give uh, is this free no no this is not free oh look at there's the cash money sign uh, here's your oxymoron of the day a donation of 700 usd per person is required <laughs> so it's, it's kind of funny because if it's required then it's really not a donation you're paying a little tuition there and you have some other options to make payments uh sadly there are no refunds that's pretty brutal pete why is there no refunds what if something comes up but in essence what he's doing and you can argue this all you want you want the same power pd has to to breathe life of the power of god into a plastic utensil and paper things and other dead items you can learn how to do that you can get that power you just got to pay for it is it true well you're seeing it with your own eyes they word it very nicely look at five days focused on learning how to walk out the fullness of who you are now you're paying to do what pete does because you want that power now does this story sound familiar at all it should because we've already seen it in holy scripture let's take a look now we're in the book of acts we're in chapter 8 read with me and please stay with me here but there was a certain man called simon which before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of samaria giving out that himself was some great one to whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest saying this man is the great power of god and to him they had regard because uh, that of a long time he had bewitched them with sorceries but when they believed Philip preaching these things concerning the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women, right? Stay with me. Then Simon himself believed also, and when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs which were done. So he continued with Philip and wondered. This You can see a little bit of jealousy. He wanted to do what Philip was doing. Now when the apostles, which were at Jerusalem, heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John, who, when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet he was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then laid they their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. And when Simon saw that through the laying on of the apostles' hands the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money, saying, Give me also this power that who, on whomever I lay hands he may receive the Holy Ghost, but Peter, the apostle Peter, said unto him, Thy money perish with thee, because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. Wow. So this is yet another reason why I do not approve of Pete Cabrera Jr. I care what you say or how you want to slice it here, Pete Cabrera is selling the gift of God at least trying to we know that he's a fraud but this is how you can also know that he's a fraud because a true disciple the Apostle Peter was so offended at this magician this sorcerer that he literally said your money die with you because you actually thought that the gift of God could be purchased with money now, a couple of things I want to point out to you here. When comparing the characters which were in this true story with what's happening in the modern times, uh, Simon the Sorcerer is not P. Cabrera. Simon the Sorcerer is you. That's right. All you that enrolled in this fraud's classes so that you can by no consultation with God, by the way, God may not want you to be a faith healer. You just simply think you can pay money, go to these classes, and then this fraud can impart to you this gift. What absolute absurdity. And no matter how you try to, to twist it, this is exactly what you're doing. This is a warning for you. I cannot imagine... Even those of you that are still going to resist after seeing this contrast, how you'll continue to go into this fraud. And there's a reason why that you continue to press into this kind of silliness and this folly. Go over to 2 Timothy chapter 4, and this is exactly why. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, 
but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. See, Pete Cabrera gets out there and he does his little David Blaine shows. Convinces a lot of people. A lot of kundalini floating around out there. Other people see it and they get all excited. They say, I want to do that. I'm all excited. But notice, whenever you see these things, Jesus is a mere footnote to what Pete does. The primary focus is on the performance. And that's why people will pay money to travel down there. I think it's in Kansas. Because they think they're going to have this gift imparted unto them. It's folly. So a couple of things for you all to consider while you defend Pete Cabrera as some miracle worker. Knowing that there is absolutely zero limitations on the power of God. If God was truly flowing through Pete Cabrera, why, why doesn't he go and see Judy here? Now Judy, of course, was a woman who was set on fire. Uh, as the article goes, she fights every day. Now, Peter is testifying, Peter, Pete uh, Cabrera, that he has such amazing power flowing through him that he can literally cause legs to grow in, grow out, bone, tissue, yet you'll never see him laying hands on somebody like Judy, much less healing her, because God is not flowing through him, because he's a fraud. But if it were true, and if you're still going to defend Pete Cabrera, maybe you could ask Pete, if he's not too busy, I don't know, maybe, just a thought, could we maybe get that plastic spoon? If you can't find the time to go see Judy, at least can we get that plastic spoon and send it to the hospital and maybe one of the nurses can take it in and just place it on Judy and she can get healed, right? Is that okay? So as we wrap up this video, I wanted to put this all down so you can see at least why I think that uh, Pete Cabrera Jr. is an absolute fraud. Number one, Pete mocks God with his ridiculous leg growth demonstrations where he commands the Holy Spirit to obey him. It's ridiculous. Pete teaches from a flawed new Bible translation, this passion translation where we proved that the author of that is an absolute lunatic. Number three, Pete Cabrera sells God's power. This is the opposite of what a true disciple of Jesus does, as demonstrated by the apostle Peter. You would never sell it. Number four, Pete's God, which is, incidentally is not the God of the Holy Bible, uh, has massive limitations. Uh, there's no amputees allowed. There's no burn victims, no lepers, and for that matter, nothing verifiable. Number five, Pete prioritizes healing over the truth of the gospel. Uh, that's just the way it is. In, in everything that I've seen, uh, he loves doing tricks. And they giggle about it. It's an absolute mockery of what salvation is. I didn't see any anguish there whatsoever. I, I did not see any preaching. There was no concern over saved souls. It was all tricks. And that is not what the gospel is. Does this surprise you? That there is so much deception in these end times? Does it surprise you that this guy is just so convincing? It shouldn't. We were warned about this. Jesus himself told you several times. There's warnings riddled throughout the New Testament. I pray that you wake up. You cannot sell the power of God. You cannot proclaim to do great miracles at will but then have limitations on other forms of sickness. Look for the proof. There's nothing wrong with it. You were told to test the spirits. 1 John chapter 4, verse 1. This guy's a fraud. For those of you that love Jesus Christ in all truth and sober-mindedness, God bless you.